Hello and welcome to Java Games Programming. I'm your host Zan from Zan's Gaming and in this tutorial we'll be going over documentation. Documentation is a way for coders to describe their code to others or even themselves using a simple human understandable language, so in our example, English. With the help of documentation, a code reader will be able to understand the code without necessarily having to understand the exact details of what's going on. So, let's get started. For this exercise, we'll be revisiting our code for tic-tac-toe from the previous tutorial and simply describing the code. As you can see, the code is already divided up into logical blocks, as indicated by these spaces between blocks of code, and these represent different tasks that the code is doing. So we can simply describe each task or each logical block. Here we initialize the scanner. Next we initialize our grid. Now we are setting up our flags to see if the game is finished playing or if whose turn it is. X turn meaning the X's turn is true. If it's false then it's O's turn. Uh, flags. Now we actually get into the game. And first thing we do is print off our grid. And this is a variable to keep track of how many turns have passed. So this is a self explanatory or self documenting variable named turn counter. Uh, if you read it, you can understand what it actually does. So we don't necessarily need to comment on that. Now we have a while loop and we want to keep looping until the game is finished. Yeah. And now we're taking in user input and we want to keep looping until we are done with the user input. If you recall, we wanted to have the valid user input, meaning it's either um, it's a numeric value within the range and that place already hasn't been played yet. So we say uh, user input variables. Until, uh, or rather until we have valid input. Now we want to say whose turn it is. And we are prompting the user for input. Now when we have the input, we, um, we translate the input into a into our row and column grid equivalents. Meaning if the user puts in, let's say, four, we know it's the first column, second row. Or three is the, the third column, first row. Nine is third column, third row, etc. And now here we are checking if the input is valid. And the way we do this is we say it's between nine and negative one. Uh, exclusive and then we see if the grid has already not been played yet. If it is we so if the input is valid we say that uh, or rather we update the grid increment the counter and say that we are done taking in user input. Rather since this is only for this particular line, we can do it like this. Once we have taken in the user input, we print the grid again. And now we do the checking for our win conditions. Now in this part of the code, I would like to go into a bit deeper to describe what each of these if statement is doing. Because if a reader is reading this code without having to understand what it's actually doing, um, it may be a bit complicated for them. 
So say check first row. That's what we're we'll doing here. Now if we can compare these two, you know, reading a statement like check first row as compared to uh, this piece of code here, check first row is a lot simpler to understand than what we have up here. So uh, this is where it comes really helpful. Okay, so after we're done with the first row, check first column. Now we're checking diagonals. Now this is uh, top left to bottom right. Now the other diagonal. Bottom left. And then we also have if the if the win condition has been met, we print out uh, the statement whomever wins, and we uh, we say that we are finished. But once again, these two parts are fairly self-explanatory. Um, and then we have actually the very last condition: if it's if it has been nine turns, then the game has been a draw. Last thing is we switch the turn. So if it's X's turn, then it becomes O's turn. If it's O's turn, then it becomes X's turn. And now here we have a documented version of our game of tic-tac-toe. Fairly straightforward, describes what the code does, and these comments have no impact on the running code itself. So the game will run exactly as it did before. Now there are many different ways for code documentation. Uh, obviously, I'm not saying mine is the best one. There are several different ways. If you uh, work for certain companies, they have their own standard for documentation. And uh, different people like to do different sorts of documentation. They have different standards. But it's good to uh, stick to one, and uh, it'll make your life much easier. So in the next tutorial, we'll be going over methods and classes. And I guess thanks for watching.